What happens when three noobs that have never played Valorant before decide to drop everything and dedicate 100 hours to the game? How good will they get? How bad will they fail? Oh, oh no! In the bomb. No! In the what rank will they end up? Hey guys, we're Team Summertime, and we tried the 100 hours Valorant challenge. Before hopping into our first match, we completed the tutorial and jumped into the firing range to get some sort of idea of the characters and tried not to get discouraged with the amount that we would have to learn. This game's knowledge gap is insane. There are 18 agents in the game with four abilities each, all with different audio and visual cues. It's overwhelming to say the least, but you gotta start somewhere. We jumped straight into the deep end by playing our first unrated game as Jet, Omen, and Sage. Having never played a tactical shooter before, the economy system was completely foreign to us. And that's a theme that would continue for a long time during this 100 hours. Well, you have to buy something. You, you want to buy anything? You have to buy something. I'm buying a sheriff. I wouldn't say we did horribly, but looking back on the footage now, editing this is hilarious. We're COD kids, so we're constantly shooting while we're moving, hitting flanks every round. Double corner strap. and absolutely spraying our vandals and praying that the bullets connected. After losing the first game, we ran into our first toxic teammate in game two that threw a hissy fit because George didn't know how to buy him a gun. Oh, no, no, Grant, Grant, Grant! No. Oh, man. Did you, did you hear him? Yeah, he said, you yeah. didn't buy for me. I'm not trying. <laughs> Grant's rushing mid with the spike. Spike down mid. Come on, Grant. No, fuck you guys. <laughs> Grant, listen. listen None of you guys Grant, Grant, Grant. None of you guys fought for me and, like, I'll, I'll, I'll fight, fight for you. What do you mean? It, felt, it felt like you guys were bullying me, so I'm throwing. I'm still throwing. We learned pretty quickly that unrated Valorant players are the most impatient people on the face of the planet. After three hours, we load into Icebox for the first time and absolutely destroy the other team for our first ever win. One of the most fun parts of this journey was the item shop. If you guys don't know, in Valorant, you can buy skins for your guns and your knives to customize your loadouts how you'd like. The only kicker is that you only have the ability to buy four skins a day that constantly rotate every 24 hours. If you would have told me before we started playing Valorant that I would be looking forward to 7 p.m. every single day just to maybe buy a gun, I don't know if I would have believed you. We picked out our favorite dream skins. Blake loved the RGX guns, George was loving the Rune Nation, and all I wanted was the Buzz Lightyear night. About eight hours in, George was locked in with Omen and KO, I was trying out Yoru and Sky, and Blake was sniping his heart out with Chamber. We were also no stranger to having some big moments in rounds individually. Another one. Nah. Oh! And at around 13 hours in, George gets the first ace of the 100 hours. Oh, uh, there should be on this bomb somewhere. To be in there in hookah? Here, all right. Two v four for the win, boys. George? Go, baby, go. Let me hop, let me hop. I'll wait for you, I'll wait for you. He's, he's in there, he's, he's gotta hop in, in the hallway. <laughs> it had taken a while, but we were finally starting to apply our knowledge of the Call of Duty game type Search and Destroy into Valorant. We started naturally moving around the map and understanding places to sit, 
corners to check, and the positions of all the bomb sites on the different maps. We even got comfortable enough to start adding a little style to our game whenever we could. Disrespect him. A little background info. I had just come off of the 100 hours of Apex Challenge playing on mouse and keyboard, so the switch to Valorant for me was a little bit more natural than it was for Blake and George. Besides a tiny little stint on Minecraft, this would be the first time that the boys had dedicated time to a game without using the sticks. Okay, now for the funny part. At the 19 hour mark, let me repeat that really quick. At the 19 hour mark, we found out that Blake was playing on 1.4 sensitivity. That's around five times faster than the average Valorant player. This guy was barely moving his wrist and doing 360. What sensitivity do you guys play on? Oh, I play on 800 DPI, like 0.5. You play on 400.6? Yeah, I play on 400.6. That's pretty common. Dang. Wait, what is Blake's yeah. sense? Yeah, uh, what is your sense? <laughs> Well, now I'm uh, not worried. <laughs> Blake's gonna play. Uh, gonna I play 800, 800, 1.4. Oh, you play on the 1.4s. <laughs> yeah, I'm 800, 1.4. Dude, 4, no bro. wonder he's wrist twisting, dude. He's 1.4. I, I don't know what's, I don't know what's common in this game. <laughs> 1.4 is psycho, dude. It looked, it looked so low. <laughs> it looked so low. Blake plays on 1.4. I thought that was low. Do you even fine. move your wrist? No, not really. <laughs> now that we had gotten Blake up to speed, we spent the next six or so hours continuing to work on our aim, map knowledge, and economy comprehension in Unrated. We were also starting to come up with different strategies, and sometimes they worked pretty damn well. One enemy remaining. Wow! Wow! That's a TST round, my boy. Wait, y'all got y'all both got two pieces. I, I got two. George got two. You got one. Wow. We also had a little bit of a tradition to start the stream with shop checks, and at 20 hours in, something really special happened. No way. Unlike in Apex, where you can basically just brute force your way to level 13 and start playing ranked. Valorant, for some reason, takes forever to level up, and you can only start playing ranked once you get to level 20. After playing for basically four days straight, we were still only at level 17. But with my new knife in hand, Blake's new sensitivity, and George's handsome looks, we were ready to keep pounding away in unrated lobbies until we reached level 20. Uh, well, I don't, what? Good shit, George! Here? There were aspects and rules to Val that we were learning along the way. Like, don't run five duelists, someone's gotta run smokes, the RGX Vandal gives you aim assist, you know, the classics. We had also heard about the 9-3 curse, but we had never experienced it. Well, 22 hours in, it finally hits. Going down three to nine at half, we decided it was time to bring it all the way back. Damn. Damn. 9-3 curse. That was for the 9-3 curse. Let's, <laughs> Let's go. go, baby. Let's go. Yeah, he's coming in mid, mid, George, mid. Da, da, da. Oh, wow. Oh, he's good. Oh, it just happened. Yep. He popped his own. Oh, my God. George was going animal style, and Blake was hitting some clutch snipes. 1v1. Where'd you plant? To your right, on the right side. Hey. Let's fucking go, Blake! Oh! The chat started getting really involved too, and, and the love was just swarming in. Nice. One, one's uh, mid cut, mid connect. Nice. Oh, shit. Shit on. 3v2. last long though because for the next four hours it seems like we were getting stomped we got smoked a few times we lost a couple close games and we ended the night with a forfeit i don't know exactly what to blame the lost streak on but if i've learned anything from this 100 hour journey it's that if you are ever getting beat just blame your teammates and move on come on grant
No, fuck you guys. We started off the next day frying with one goal in mind, level 20. We did our daily challenges, weekly challenges, played some spike rush, and terrorized a few unrated lobbies. Finally, after 28 hours and 40 minutes, we were all officially able to play rank. And now, the game really begins. All right, true, you can cut to the first game of rank now since we're good, and then you can play the montage for the first game. <laughs> In order to get your initial rank, you have to play five placement matches. Ours went not great. Fracture, loss. Breeze, Blake spilled his coffee on a setup. Oh, nice. Blake's on two jump. Silva. Pitch it. Oh no, Blake. Shit, boys. Let's go. <laughs> and then we lost. Haven, we got smoked. Defenders. GG's, guys. I had a lot of fun, though. That's all that matters. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> Icebox, another L. Finally, we get something going on our last placement match on Breeze. Tied 6-6 six to six at half, Blake opens the pistol round with a nutty three-piece to get the momentum going. A couple two-pieces in solid rounds before he goes insane to tie the match up 10 to 10. After finishing out our placement matches one and four, we were finally given our ranks. I somehow placed silver one, and Blake and George enter the competitive arena, bronze three. As frustratingly long as the grind can be getting all the way up to level 20, by the time you are there, you are definitely ready for ranked. The bronze lobby seems somewhat easier than the last 30 hours of unranked play, and we were feeling comfortable. You laying it? Yep. Brim weak, 130, 130. And they're front of their, their main. The other one behind you, oh, in the hallway behind. Brim's one, Brim is one. one enemy nice, remaining. nice. That one's KJ. Oh, the door's in the, in the hallway. Right here, right here. Right. right here. Ping if you need to, poor guy. You good. You Our dude's flashing. He's calling KJ. Nice. Let's go, Hitch. Let's go, baby. You got four that round? That was fucking crazy. After three wins to start off our ranked careers, we all end the night in silk. It seems to be a day-to-day -day basis type thing with Valorant lobbies because the next day was a heartbreaker. It always sucks going on losing streaks in any game with a rank system, but we were losing nail biters. 13 to 11, 13 to 10, 14-12, we lost to a cheater next, 13-2, and another loss, 13-4, it just didn't stop. We would still have okay moments here and there, but it was very much a foot on our throat situation for most of the night. These moments are always gonna happen in any game with a ranked play. All you can do is learn, move on, and blame your teammates for everything. Come on, Grant. No, fuck you guys. We were back to where we started, trying to get everyone up to silver, but that doesn't necessarily mean that we were playing badly. We were still using our utility well. Wait, what are you calling it? Yeah, yeah. You already called there. it? What? Uh, yo, he's yeah. flanking again. Sit. No, it's not my ult, not my ult. I'm watching for screens. On pinch week 80, Phoenix. And we were really focused on continuing to improve. After almost 42 hours, I was the last of the bunch to finally get an ace. Nice hit. Damn, that was insulting, actually. Okay. Ah! Yeah! Yo. And that's a pretty good way to start the game. This is around the time where George really starts to take over games. 
It isn't rare to see George command a swing round, grab an ace, or clutch when we needed it the most. At 49 hours, we got our first 13-0. Uh, I don't know if you really care about that, but I thought it was interesting. And <laughs> later that night, we decided to play one more game after a long stream, which is always when the craziness happens. We're on Pearl, Yoru, Chamber, Omen, and we find ourselves down six to 12. It's pretty much chalked. Two in the morning, one round away from losing. If I'm a betting man, I'm going with the other team. I pop my ult and work off Blake's op pick to flank behind them. Got one, there's another one. That's the round seven. George, Blake, and some dude named Lamp hold down an A push for the eighth round. Okay, Lamp. Damn, Lamp. A couple goofy Yoru silver plays, <laughs> and I help protect B for the ninth round. Help him. He's on, on wall, on wall right now. Oh, help him, help him. Nice. Then Blake and I deja vu them with another Yoru flank plus op combo to take the 10th round. I get a sneaky two-piece on A-side and Lamp clutches up to send us a round away from overtime. The next round, Blake cuts off a rotation with Chamber's super gun and sends us to a 12-12 overtime. Win by two. That's six rounds straight. Last game of the night. If we lose, it's Lamp's fault. We get stopped trying our luck at A, but a team ace next round ties us back up at 13. We run it back with another A push. We go through Art and get bombed down. After we all drop, it's just Lamp in a 1v3. There's no shot he pulls this off. One enemy remaining. You will not kill my allies. One enemy remaining. Oh, oh. Lamp! <laughs> Lamp! Lamp! The other team takes over A the next round and ties it back up at 14 to 14. Next, we rotate out of A to win the next offense just for them to do the same thing the next round. Lamp almost did it again, but it's 15-15. I get wall banged, but George gets my trade and we successfully take the A site at 16. Blake rocked the glass op and gets a first blood on B long and scares the rest of the team to rotate to A where George, Lamp, and myself are waiting patiently. Yeah. One enemy remaining. Spike down A. Oh. Do Holy shit, my boy. 33 hits, let's go, you demon. The wonderful thing about this 100 hour series is that it teaches us the beauty of each game that we get to play and why so many people call it their home game. Yeah, sometimes you get one tapped by demons all night, and sometimes you get absolutely bombarded with the chaos of utility, but very few games out there can give you that feeling of being down six rounds on elimination point at three in the morning. You claw your way back into overtime and then tug of war rounds back and forth while your heart rate and your anxiety levels skyrocket. Combine that feeling of resilience with the satisfaction of seeing your rank increase at the end of the battle and man, there's, there's almost just like nothing like it. Throughout the first 55 hours of playing Valorant, we had exclusively triple stacked our way through the lobbies. Just three guys figuring it all out themselves. I figured it wouldn't exactly hurt to grab some help, so we called in the big guns. Allow me to introduce you to the 18-time Counter-Strike champion, major winner, king of watch parties, used to be shirtless in a closet, Tarek Selleck, aka Tarek. That's, it's just his name, Tarek. Now, we are no stranger to hopping into games with professional players. We've done it countless times in other games, and we're always very impressed with the next level. This was different, though. How you want it? Fast or slow? Very fast. fast. As fast, fast as it can possibly be. Ah! <laughs> Having never played a tactical shooter before, we realized just how far away 
the elite level is in a game where we had just started. If we can jump and touch the skill ceiling in Call of Duty after playing it for a decade, we would have to take an elevator to even see the ceiling in this game. Tarek and Exalt were so snappy and knowledgeable in the game, and they were just running through our hilarious little silver lobbies. Tarek even felt bad about it at one point and just started running around the map with Neon, trying to call out for us and resist getting kills for himself. What did I just watch? It made for some wonderful content, though. One shot mark. Poke me, yeah. poke me, bitch! Poke me, bitch! Poke! Poke me! Damn it. Remember, remember there's uh, a wet run, bitch. Could he have TP? Probably. I think he's still there. I think he's still there, too. I think he's shook. Hit him with it. Bait the, the plant. Uh, yeah. What's up, ah! What's up, ah! What's up, man? What I tell you? Yeah. Mental too strong. We finally had shooters on our side because up until this point, the only person we could rely on was Lamp. Terrace community was very welcoming and sort of like a, oh, look at look at these little noobs sort of way. Ferrari Peak. Ferrari Peak is the, the click. Oh, yes. jump spot. Wait, you know how to do that? Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. No, I just, am I doing it right? No, I mean, yeah, it looks. All right, yeah, yeah. I didn't. I, didn't <laughs> <say anything>. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're riding the wall. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, um, that's funny, <laughs> bro. I just lost fool. Oh, you fool. Yeah, bro. Uh, now that we all have all that info, our confidence was through the roof. Though. The other one's back here, too. Oh. I ain't never seen a so ball like that. That was something special. I know it's only been 55 hours, but that was once in a lifetime. What was that? Nothing gets you quite pumped up like a little bit of Tarek gas in your corner. My favorite part about the casting is when they whisper. Here's the read. The read? You ready for the read? The We're read right here. Optic hitch. Watch yeah, they do that in Three, Cocktail when they're doing that. Two, does does he have what it takes? Oh only time will tell. Oh my god. And it won't be two. <laughs> And ladies and gentlemen, we are in the 1v2 with 10 seconds left. 10 seconds left. Look at my name. Oh my god, what is happening? You guys are like gods. Having been carried to gold one during this little gaming session, Tarek threw us back into the gold lobbies to fend for ourselves. And now that we had a pretty good understanding of the rank system and how far away we were uh, from the top, we decided the best goal for us is to try and make platinum by the end of the 100 hours. So now the real grind begins. Gold one to platinum in 40 hours. That shouldn't be too hard. Gold was not easy though, to be honest. We were finding more understanding of the game as a whole, but for some reason, it seems like we would win five and lose three every night. And each game is about 45 minutes long on average, so the days and, and ranks were just crawling by. We kept going up to almost getting the boys into gold, to me going back to silver, coming back to gold, it was, it was just a roller coaster, a very, very slow roller coaster. During this time though, George had by far the craziest clutch of the whole 100 hours in a 15-15 overtime game on Pearl. Knife and six, wait for it. After around 70 hours, we go on a crazy run, winning tons of games straight, and the full squad gets into gold. 
30 hours left to hit plat, that's gotta be a piece of cake. And watching back the footage now, this is the grind where the improvement is most obvious. The gameplay doesn't look as uh, scrubby as before. We were finally starting to get to a point where it was more of like a three steps forward, one step back thing rather than just Charlie Browning at every street. Do you guys get that reference? Charlie Brown, Charlie Brown, one step forward, one, Never mind. At 76 hours, the boys are all gold too. We were starting to engage more in the Valorant scene as well. Like we were, we were watching streams and videos. We were keeping up with the VCT. We started to learn lineups in the game. It wasn't rare to see Blake bounce a Sova dart off of 50 walls or find me trying to teleport behind enemy lines with a Yoru lineup. Oh, they're funny. Nice. Yes, they're funny. That being said, it was still very back and forth, mostly because of our teammates. To blow off some steam, at 93 hours left, we took out our frustration out on some poor team by buying Odin's and being obnoxious as possible. They hate us. Oh no. my <laughs> god! No. <laughs> this is how you check quarters in this game. I was still a little over halfway to plat with seven hours left. It was time to pick up the pace. And we did. One enemy remaining. Let's go, Blakey! <laughs> Not good out. He's on sight. Oh, he's on Oh, shit. I'm trying to watch you, George. George. Let's go, baby. We were getting some of the worst teammates possible during these last couple of games, but we were still making it happen. Blake and George specifically really go huge during this last push. It's time to do some dumb shit. We were absolutely determined to make it, and the Hollywood story ending seemed to be shaping up. To go to OT. Oh! The final game, as the clock hits 100 hours, was a pretty easy win on Ascent, and after checking my rank, I was nine points away from Platinum. <laughs> one? Are you one away? How much? No, what is he? What is he? Nine away. One more, baby. One more. One more. Our goal was so close that we could almost taste it. A hundred hours of learning countless utility, strategy, and just simply how to play a tactical shooter. We had to play one more. Not only for the story, but for the teammates that we had along the way, like Tarek, and more importantly, Lamb. We had to do it for the viewers that were tormenting themselves, watching us be terrible for so long. We had to do it for our bank accounts that had suffered greatly during this run. But most of all, we had to do it for ourselves. Three best friends conquering a new game together. So that's exactly what we did. We played one last game and we lost. so much for watching the 100 hours of Valorant challenge. It's been an absolute blast and has become one of our favorite games to play. If you want to follow along other challenges that we do for the channel, we stream almost every weeknight at tst.live and be sure to let us know what game you want us to do next for the 100 hours challenge.